In this video, we are going to take a look at Gentoo's package manager and its most important configuration files. To those of you unfamiliar, uh, Gentoo uses Portage as its package manager and Portage is one of the reasons that uh, makes Gentoo great in my opinion. It gives you an incredible amount of control in terms of how you want to deal or handle your packages and stuff like that. But that freedom also comes at a cost of slightly increased complexity, which you'll have to deal with as a Gentoo user. And I would like to give you a quick introduction into the most important configuration files of Portage itself. So let's get started. As you can see, I'm currently logged in as root in Etsy slash Portage directory and where most of these configuration files, if not all of them, are going to be located by default. And the file that most of you are going to be very familiar with is called make.conf, right? This is a file that contains the central configuration for Portage. You can set up the specific CPU architecture that you want to optimize for. You can set up the compilation flags, your custom ones if you want so. You can obviously change the licenses that you're going to accept by default and set up your basic keywords if you want to, right? In my case, I use AMD64. On all my packages, I haven't had any stability issues or anything like that, and I've been able to get away with it. So I use that. And you can also set many other settings. And the most important one is probably the global use flag variable, which obviously includes use flags that will permeate into every single app that you will install afterwards, right? So yeah, this is a very important file. It is a file that you'll have to set up if you wanna install Gentoo according to the official uh, documentation. The other file that we're going to take a look into is called package.use. And uh, I forgot to mention that Portage doesn't really differentiate where the package.use is in fact a file that already contains those configs or where it's a directory that contains the subsequent files with those configurations. Portage will treat it the same as long as you name it correctly. You cannot just simply rename package.use to package.used without any workarounds and expect it to work. It has to be named correctly, but where it is a file or a directory containing files, it doesn't matter as long as the configs are there. And in my case, I have package.use as a directory, which contains a file with those configurations. So let's take a look at that. And package.use is a very, very important config file. It is a config file that you'll use most often, in my opinion, because it directly affects the features that the apps uh, will have, right? So as you can see, I recently compiled KeyPass XC. It didn't come with browser integration by default. And because I wanted to add that browser integration, I just simply added the browser use flag. And the same thing was done with, let's say, OBS Studio, where I wanted to add Pipewire support. So I just typed in the Pipewire use flag into that. I wanted to support for Pulse Audio as well. So I had to add this as well. This is the file where you set specific use flag per package. You add features, you remove features of individual packages. So this is very, very useful. You'll probably edit this file most often. Uh, from my experience. And the other file that we want to look into is called package.accept keywords. In my case, again, it's a directory, but as I said, it does not matter. This file allows you to specify keywords per package. Uh, what are keywords exactly? Keywords are settings that allow you to test unstable packages if you so desire, right? So if you look at hyperline protocols, you can uh, see that I have used these, I don't know if it's called a wildcard or not, but Let's call it an asterisk for, for now. Uh, I use the asterisk keyword, which basically means to pull the latest git repo and compile it. And this is for cases where you want to use bleeding edge versions of something. If you want the latest versions that work for AMD64, you would set it up like this and it would compile the version of Hyperline protocols which work on AMD64 architecture. Uh, you can also remove flags if you want to by adding a minus sign like this. And some of you might wonder what is this file for, right? This file is very useful if you wanna try out bleeding edge versions of specific packages, or if you wanna try out unstable ones, packages that are in the testing phase, and it allows you to mix stable with uh, unstable packages very well, right? If you want to have, let's say, all packages stable, but you want to try the bleeding edge of Hyperline protocols, you can do it thanks to this. You don't have to set it up globally and mess up your entire system. It gives you a very granular control over which packages you want to be unstable or bleeding edge. So that's also very, very useful. And the other file that I also think is quite important is called package.mask. 
And this file allows you to mask specific versions of packages. Maybe you want to keep the system a tiny bit more stable. Maybe you don't want to hop or install into the latest version that was currently released. You would basically mask that version here and it would prevent Portage from updating to that specific version that you just masked. So yeah, that's also a very useful file. The other file, which is the exact opposite, is called package.unmask. And I don't even think I have that file, but we can create it right now, it doesn't really matter. And this file does the exact opposite, right? You can specify the packages that you wanna unmask, and Portage sometimes masks packages for a reason, usually for a very good reason. Maybe there was a security vulnerability that was discovered in a package, and therefore they might have decided to kind of pull it away. But if you wanna unmask that, and if you wanna risk it, that's what the package unmask would be for. And the other file that is very, very important, especially if you're using overlays, is gonna be called repos.conf. And this file obviously contains the uh, overlays that you have, right? So I, for example, use Brave as one of my browsers, or I used to, not too much anymore, but I used to. And that package can be found in the Brave overlay. So I added that, and that allows you to install Brave through Portage. And this file is obviously very useful if you wanna install packages that are missing from the official Gentoo repository. The other directory that I wanted to look into was called the env directory. And that directory contains your custom settings that you can then use for specific packages. So I wanted to, for example, compile Samba with specific settings, and that's where I created the patch Samba Clang 4. And as you can see, this file kind of overrides the basic LD flags that are used during the compilation phase. And then I can attach that override to Samba that I did in package.env right here, right? So I basically told Portage, hey man, whenever you compile Samba, override that LD flag that we have defined before. Patch it with this particular ENV file and Portage will then look into the patch Samba clank, override the LD flags and compile Samba with the new LD flags. That's a very, very important pair in my opinion. And obviously we also have package.license, which is gonna be very, very useful for gaming if you wanna install Steam, for example, because it gives you a more granular control over which packages to accept and stuff like that. And as you can see, I have Steam, so I had to uh, accept the Evolve Steam license and stuff like that. Again, a very important directory or file. The last directory that I wanted to look into was called Patches. And this is a very interesting directory. It's not necessarily the most useful one because you're probably not gonna touch it, maybe once or twice, but you're not gonna change it afterwards. And this directory allows you to apply patches per package, which is absolutely amazing. So for example, in my case, I use Grub and I wanted to add Argon2 support for Grub 2.12. And Grub doesn't have that by default, so I simply just found a patch online and I decided to add it to the patches directory and Portage, whenever it's compiling that specific version of Grub, which in my case is 2.12, as you can see, it will apply that patch before compilation and it will compile that to add the Argon2 support into my Grub executable. I mean, isn't that amazing? I think it's great. And that's probably it for this video. I hope that you found this video slightly useful and see you next time.